Okay, Sergeant. Cut it. Yes, sir. You're going to be fighting one of these days. That's why you're in training now. You're going to be fighting against men who have good equipment, too, who also intend to win. Your best guarantee to get the other fellow before he gets you depends upon your ability to handle your equipment, your ability to get your guns into action fast, and to aim and fire them accurately. Now, this is a good tank, one of the best in the world. It has a 75 millimeter gun with a machine gun mounted coaxially. It has an anti-aircraft gun. It has a bow machine gun. It has plenty of firepower, shock action, and armor protection. It's big, it's fast, and it's tough. But no tank, no matter how good, is better than the men inside. I'm going to show you how to use $70,000 worth of armament and metal that wouldn't be worth 70 cents without you. I've got a demonstration crew here to help me. There are five men in the M4 tank crew. The driver, of course, drives the tank. The bow gunner handles the bow machine gun. He's sometimes called bow, short for bow gunner. The loader loads both the 75 and the coaxial. He also operates the radio. The gunner aims and fires the 75 and the coaxial. And the tank commander runs the show and handles the anti-aircraft gun. Each man in a trained crew knows all five jobs and knows them well. He's got to. If something happens to your gunner in a fight, you haven't got time to figure out just what the hell he did to make the gun fire. You've got to know. Let's start at the beginning. Before any tank can go into action, in combat or on the range, it must be prepared for action. Getting ready to go into action, the driver and bow gunner close their hatches so that when the gunner tests his turret travers, the 75 won't smack against an open hatch. With the hatches closed, they shove their periscopes up into travel position and check them to see if they're clean and tightly set. After testing his periscope, the bow gunner checks the head space on the bow gun. When he's sure everything's okay, he half loads the gun. The men in the hall are ready. Now the gunner. First of all, he's got to be certain the hatches are closed. Hatches? All clear. And there's enough oil in the power traverse system. The oil level in the gauge should be even with the two top screws. Now he unlocks the turret. Make sure it's unlocked by traversing it manually, right and left. And pushes up the clutch lever to shift from manual traverse. Sometimes he has to jiggle the manual hand wheel in order to shift. He spins the manual traverse wheel to be certain it's disengaged. Puts the power traverse in neutral. The grip must be straight up and down. And turns on the turret motor. He checks it by traversing back and forth. Another thing. Did you see him look up when he turned on the power traverse switch? That's because a power traverse motor also operates the gyro stabilizer pumps. And the gunner has to watch the gyro oil level gauge. That is what he saw. If the oil column had dropped like this when he turned the switch, he would have known that there was air in the system. When the column stays where it belongs, halfway between the two top sets of screws, and doesn't drop, the gunner knows his gyro oil system's okay. He releases the 75 from its traveling lock, 
before he turns on the gyro. He makes sure his gyro control unit is vertical. Sets the stiffness control knob at zero. And checks the control unit plug. Then he switches on his stabilizer and frees the gun from manual elevation. And now he adjusts his stabilizer to his gun. He turns the stiffness knob up past the point where the gun hunts or jerks up and down. And then turns it down to the point where the hunting stops. He sets the recoil knob on five. He'll adjust it more accurately while he's firing. Having shifted to power travelers and gyro control, he makes sure his gun elevates and depresses properly. Then, unless he expects to fire from a moving position, he turns off his gyro. Next, the gunner checks the firing mechanisms of the 75 and coaxial. He switches the 75 off manual safety and steps on the foot pedal that fires the big gun mechanically. The click of the firing pin tells him the mechanical control is working. He turns on the juice, and after the loader has recocked the piece, he tests the electric controls of both the 75 and coaxial by stepping on the foot buttons. He turns the switch off until he's ready to fire. Finally, he pushes his sight up to travel position and make sure it's clean and tight. The loader also has plenty to do when a tank's being prepared for action. He takes care of the coaxial first. He checks the headspace, just as the assistant driver checks the headspace of the bow machine gun. Half loads it, and it's ready for action. It's up to the loader to see that the bore of the 75 is clean and clear. He opens the breech, flips the handle back to its original position, and looks through the barrel. When he's checked his guns, he makes sure his ready rack is full, and all shells are clean without dents or rough spots. The gunner has to swing the turret around so the loader can get to the little gas motor that runs the Homolite auxiliary generator. He opens the gas line valve, pushes the choke to the right, and presses the starter button. When the engine starts, he pushes the choke to the left again. The loader, like the gunner, sets and checks his periscope last. Those are the things a tank crew does to get ready to fire. We took them slowly, man by man, to study them. But actually, they all happen at once and fast. Let's watch it again. The driver and bow gunner close their hatches and set up their periscopes. And the bow gunner checks and half loads the bow machine gun. The gunner puts the turret into power control, adjusts his stabilizer, tests his firing switches, and checks his periscope. The loader loads the coaxial, checks the bore of the 75, inspects the ammunition, turns on the homolite, 
and finally raises his periscope to travel position. Every one of those preparatory steps is absolutely necessary. When you go into combat, you've got to know your guns will work, your ammunition is clean and undented, and your turret will traverse when you need to traverse. You can be sure of your tank only if you check everything thoroughly while you've got time. But there's one other thing to do before you're ready to fire. Your 75 and its sight work together. They're both mounted in the turret, and they traverse when the turret traverses. They're connected by a linkage arm, and the sight moves up and down when the gun moves up and down. You aim the gun by traversing, and elevating or depressing it until you pick up your target in your sight. I don't need to tell you that you won't hit what you're aiming at unless the gun and sight are lined up with each other. But travel vibration and gun recoil may jar the sight out of alignment. You therefore sight adjust the 75. It's easy. You simply line up both sight and gun on some distinctive object at least a thousand yards away. The farther away, the better. Any prominent landmark will do. Church steeple, telephone pole, or a silo. Now, if you're sight adjusting at night, use a star if you can. Best bet around here seems to be a tree. Sergeant. Yes, sir. See that large tree over there with the small ones grouped around it? Yes, sir. We'll use it. Adjust your sight on that large tree. Traverse right. Crosshairs are fixed on the muzzle to help you sight adjust. Black thread is carried for this purpose, but string or even fine wire can be used if necessary. Right. Right. There. Now up, Mr. Hare. The loader lines up the gun with a landmark by sighting through the open breech. Then he removes the percussion mechanism and sights through the firing pinwell to get his gun lined up more exactly. The loader and gunner continue moving the gun until the intersection of the crosshairs rests exactly on the top of the landmark, the tip of the tree in this instance. With the gun in perfect alignment, the gunner lines up the sight by turning the sight adjustment knobs. He uses the zero dot of his reticle as the center point. And that's all there is to sight adjustment. Line up first your gun, and then your sight on some distinctive object at least a thousand yards away. When the sight adjustment is correct, the loader replaces the percussion mechanism, and the gunner makes a record of the knob readings. You'll have to adjust your four periscopic sight heads separately, and keep a record of each. Sight adjust all the heads when you have plenty of time, and recheck at least the one in your sight just before firing. When you fight buttoned up, the tank commander dismounts the anti aircraft gun and stows it in the turret. And now we're ready for action, with our tank tight as a drum, the sight in 75 in alignment, and all preparatory steps completed. Let's see some action. Driver? Driver, ready. Fog? Fog, ready. Loader? Loader, ready. Gunner? 